Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pix Imperfect, and today I'm going to share with you how you can create the perfect shallow depth of field effect by combining the power of Photoshop and Luminar. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, with the background layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J twice to make two copies. With the very first layer on the top, let's name this subject and turn it off. And the next layer here, let's name it main. This is the layer where we're going to work on. First of all, let's go to filter and convert for smart filter so that we convert this layer into a smart object so that whatever filter we apply, we can and change their values later. In other words, we can say that this is non-destructive. Let's go to filter. Luminar AI, it should be under Skylum software. Luminar AI, let's go ahead and choose that. Let's go to edit and then scroll down to the sky section, sky AI, all right? So by the way, we can change the sky to whatever we wish. So let's go ahead and first do that because this can make the image look a little more exciting. So let's go ahead with this guy. I know this is a video about background blur, but since we are here, why not? This sky looks good. We can always just increase the brightness of the sky. Let's increase the warmth a little bit to match it a little better and increase the brightness all the way to the right hand side. That looks pretty good. Now let's come down to the portrait section and portrait bokeh AI. There you have it and just increase it all the way to the right hand side. And there you have it. Actually, you can stop here. But the problem is it's not very perfect. Luminar AI is a pretty great tool for doing quick edits. But this is a complicated image. Photoshop, on the other hand, is excellent for manual stuff. So in here as well, you can just zoom in and just choose which areas you don't want to blur or you do want to blur. So for example, there are certain areas which are selected. So let's click on defocus first and we can paint over those areas. For instance, this area is extra. So we can definitely paint over those and have them defocused. Now we didn't do it properly, but this fixes that. But here instead, what we want to do is stay a little inside and defocus a lot on the outside. I know it's bleeding in a lot, that's not a problem. That's what we're going to fix and perfect in Photoshop. And that's what we need Photoshop for. At the moment, just stay a little in and defocus a lot. Just give yourselves some breathing room. If you think you have removed extra and due to that, it's creating some weird artifacts right over here. No problem. Let's go to focus and then focus a couple of these areas a little more. Probably it should fix that. There you go. It does fix that. And then you can go back to defocus and start defocusing the extras. So that looks about right. Just hit apply. So we are back in the mystical world of Photoshop. And now it's time for us to turn on our subject layer. Now in here, you can use any method that you like. By the way, Photoshop select subject is not way better either. If you select the subject layer and just click on select subject here as well, you will notice that this is not perfect too. And if you click on the mask button, you will see all of the flaws right over here. I think Luminars was way better. Have a look at it. What's just hanging from Zen? Maybe that's a new fashion. So we are not going to use this method. You can use the quick selection tool right over here and slowly and gradually start selecting the subject. All right, and subtracting areas which you don't think are a part of the subject. What I recommend doing here because of such complex background is that you can use the pen tool. If you don't know how to use the pen tool, please do watch the video on mastering the pen tool. It's linked up in the description. That my friend is the most accurate way of creating a mask. So press P for the pen tool and you can get started from right here. All right. So you can take all the time in the world to create a perfect path around the subject. I've already done that. So if I go to paths, I have the subject path. So let's hold the controller command and click on the thumbnail. And here we have the selection. All we have to do is to go to layers, make sure subject layer is selected. And that's why we went a little inside on the main layer so that we have some breathing room right here. Anyway, let's turn on the subject, select the subject layer and then click on the mask button. And now take a look. We have a perfect mask right here. And by the way, if you think that the masking is too sharp, and yes, it is, it's very, very harsh. Just select the subject layer and then open up the properties. And if you cannot see the properties, go to window and then make sure properties is checked and just increase the feather to about one or 1 1.5. Let's go for 1.5. Have a look. Now there's some feather on the mask and it's soft. But then again, there's certain edges showing up. So we want to just push the mask in a little. So select the mask, go to filter, other, and then minimum. Choose preserve roundness because this mask doesn't have any hard edges. So roundness is good. This is a human. Radius, you can control how much in you want it to get. So this is 0.4. As soon as you increase it, see, the mask is getting in. See? So let's keep it at about 1.6 and hit OK. 
there you have it, my friend, the perfect shallow depth of field effect. And if you're wondering why did I choose Luminar to do the background blur, let me share with you a comparison. Have a look at this. So this is the original. This, what you see now, was done with tilt shift inside of blur gallery in Photoshop. So this was done with Photoshop. This is Photoshop's result. If you zoom in, you see no bokeh. This is just simple blurring. That's all there is to it. And let me share with you Luminar's result. If I turn that on, have a look at it. Now that looks like real lens bokeh. By the way, I also did Photoshop's own lens blur, which is destructive and you cannot change the settings later. And let's compare it with that as well. Even lens blur is not as good. So to me personally, Luminar looks good and that's why I use it. By the way, Luminar is also coming out with something very, very exciting. That's going to be absolutely mind-blowing. We might have a video about it very soon. If you want to know more about it right now, check the links in the description. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.